Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video, I'm Get Good Guy, and I love this weapon, the M1A1 Carbine, for the Assault class. Batfood 5 has strikingly different gunplay from Batfood 1, with more of an emphasis upon accuracy and managing recoil rather than dealing with spread, and thus this beast is making my early experience of the game a whole ton of fun, as I can hammer the trigger whilst keeping my crosshairs firmly on the enemy's vitals. Now I'm not saying this is the best gun in the game or anything like that, don't get clickbaited, I've only played a few hours of the early access trial and I'm very much limited by the 10 hour nature of the trial itself, so I haven't had chance to use a vast amount of other available weapons, nor is Simthit currently available for those extra detailed stats, but I figured I'd briefly let you guys know what I'm having success with so far and we can all start to build up our in-game knowledge of Battlefield 5 from here, because if this works for me then it's bound to work for some of you out there as well, and I'll revisit this weapon at some point to do my usual full weapon review when I've had more playtime more opportunity to use alternatives, and when the Simthic stats are available. But in the meantime, we'll go over my basic thoughts and feelings about the M1A1 Carbine. So here are the core stats that you can find in-game for the M1A1 Carbine. It's a semi-auto rifle, with a moderate amount of damage, good accuracy, decent hip fire, let's say, and, uh, and pretty good control overall, with a rate of fire of 450 rounds per minute, and an ammunition count of 16 rounds per full reload. As a point of reference, I'll show you here, how it compares with other weapons. So the Gewehr 43 for example, a bit more damage but lesser stats in other departments, with a rate of fire of 300 rounds per minute. That's 150 slower than the Carbine, or if you remember the M1907 from Battlefield 1, that makes a return in this game, that has a rate of fire of 770 rounds per minute, so a lot quicker, but as you can see, it's nowhere near as accurate, etc. What this provides, from my experience at least, is a weapon that can be highly rewarding at range for a player with good accuracy, while still being viable at closer range if you have a fast trigger finger, essentially meaning you can pick people off in the distance and spam them down up close. Now obviously the results will be highly dependent upon ability level, so keep that in mind, but if you know what you're doing, or you practice enough, I reckon you'll enjoy the M1A1 Carbine. I frequently, and I mean frequently, outshot enemy snipers at pretty long ranges. I'm playing on console so sniping is different and likely a bit more tricky than on PC, so this may not entirely translate to that platform, but on console, this weapon is just far more forgiving than a sniper and can still contest at those long ranges if you can shoot nice and straight. Now the maps in Battlefield 5 can be very large and open, in fact some people think the maps are too big overall. I'm as yet undecided on that but the M1A1 has provided me with the opportunity to play without range being a significant issue, especially mid-range where it's just easy mode picking people off. Place your crosshairs around chest and head level and just fire away. And then at close range, I'm also having no trouble beating out enemies with automatic weapons by virtue of just being better prepared than they are. Yes, their weapon may be better suited, but if you just straight up outshoot them, then the M1A1 is still very much capable of carrying you through those close quarters combat engagements. And I'm discussing this having spent most of my time playing without the specializations on. Although the in-game stats I showed earlier I believe were affected by me having the specializations on, so do keep that in mind. But anyway, back to the point. Once you unlock the specializations and slap them on, this thing goes to a whole new level. This is because with the skill tree that I've chosen, you get faster aim down sights, which is a big one for this weapon. It feels kind of slow before you throw these specializations on, so that helps a lot. You don't have to be quite so premeditated in your actions, you can actually be reactive reactionary, whereas beforehand I was having to pre-aim things to take them down and at close range it was a bit tricky, so quick aim, 33% faster to aim down sight. Then we come to custom stock, so you've got improved accuracy in aim fire while moving, so you can strafe back and forth and still hit the target, which again is huge, especially for a weapon like this, where you're trying to out strafe the enemy at range. Plus, light and stock, so you can move faster, strafing side to side. Again, this coupled up with the previous one is huge. It's a massive, massive improvement. And then finally, enhanced grip. So the hip fire is just a bit better because it does feel a bit weak. Sometimes you do need to rely on this at close range. So that definitely helps to boost it up because without it, it drops quite a lot. So now we come to the sights that I'm using. I tried the standard iron sights and I found it extremely hard to track targets. I tried the aperture sight and they just weren't right for me either, but I knew I wanted some form of magnification. So I landed on the mid-range scope and I've been in dreamland ever since. You gain three times magnification with this option and it plays right into something I've discussed before during Battlefield 1. That being something similar to throwing the marksman scope on some weapons in that game. On the right kind of weapon, I find it provides enough zoom to be 
able to spot people further out, whilst not being extreme enough to completely ruin close range viability. It'll come down to the individual as to what works best for them, but as this video is about what's working for me, this is the scope I'm sticking with for now for this kind of weapon, and it's working extremely well for me. Obviously, the M1A1 does have some drawbacks. It can require a few shots to kill someone from full health, and you do have to essentially be better than the enemy to win a lot of close range fights. Plus, a highly accurate sniper has the ability to one-shot you, which you don't, but that's not really what I'm going for with this one. I'm in love with this weapon because of its versatility. It rocks due to versatility. Its ability to do everything somewhere between competently and fantastically, and I hope some of you have a similar experience with it if you give it a try. I highly recommend you do. So, what do you think? Have you tried the M1A1 carbine? What's your favourite weapon so far? And if you haven't played Battlefield 5 yet, are you excited about it? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, hitting the like button would really help me out. Subscribe if you're new here, turn on those notifications with the bell button so you don't miss future content, and join the Discord server in my pinned comment and description in order to interact more with me and others from the community. Now let's go over to the Board of Awesome for the epic people who support the channel on Patreon. That support helps me to do this every single day, so thanks to everybody on here. If you want to join them on the Board of Awesome, the link to the Patreon page is in the description and my pinned comment. And with that all said, I'm Get Good Guy, and I'll see you next time. Later.